I am Duango AC, and this is Taskbot playing Mario Kart 64. I've got with me on the couch Weatherton, who is here to provide commentary and is, in fact, the author of this tool assisted speedrun. And this is Rintendo and Defendasam. I brought them along because it's not a great idea to leave them in the hotel room. Um, <laughs> so, we're going to get started right away with the Mushroom Cup. I can tell you right now, in case it hasn't been obvious with the delay, we've had some video problems, we've had some issues with desynchronization, there's a lot of static electricity in this room. So don't rub your feet and touch the person next to you or anything, okay? Uh, so we could desynchronize, which is basically what happens when the game is expecting one thing and we do something else or vice versa. Uh, so if it happens, forgive us. Let's start with the Mushroom Cup and hopefully it detects a controller. Here goes. Now it'll take a bit for the HDMI signal to come up. So you'll hear it before you see it. I can hear it's doing something. Do we have video? And we have video. Okay, here we go. I'll let Weather doesn't take it over from here. The menuing was so quick, we're already in the race by the time we get to see it. Uh, <laughs> so Mario Kart 64 is pretty broken. You can essentially just go around the finish line uh, pole you know, on most courses and, and get it to be uh, tricked into thinking you've completed the race. Thankfully, it's not easy to do that on most courses, so pretty much every course looks very different. So 25 seconds, not bad. Uh, if you're curious, this is a, a hotly speedrun game. If you go to speedrun.com, uh, Beck Abney's currently got the world record there at 25.30. Um, RTA timing, this run will be 18 minutes, so it's, it's a very different set of strategies when you're using tool assisted speedrunning. Essentially, you know, we manipulate luck, so we get to get every item we want uh, when we want it. Um, and we get to try again and again and again every frame to make it as, as perfect as you can. So I was able to drop back in a second, get two stars. Um, Stars are not, you can't get anything other than a mushroom to go fast in first. So if you want a star, triple mushroom, gold mushroom, you gotta drop back to do that. On this particular race, it was worth dropping back, not for one, but two stars. And now you'll see a lot of mushrooms coming up. Mushrooms have a 10% chance in first, um, in terms of probability tables. There's a, there's a lookup table in, in the game that you can see. Um, there's actually less common items in first, like the ghost. Um, later, later stage, you'll see a whole lot of ghost manipulation, which is very challenging to do because it's a 5% chance every time. Those moles are a, uh, a totally random element to the game. So even if you're playing in uh, time trials, even if you do the exact same race, two races in a row, you could hit a, hit a, um, a mole one time, not the other. It's also faster to slide. That's about the most normal race you're going to see, just yeah. saying it. Yeah, the, uh, try as we might, we can't find a shortcut on this race. One day, maybe. But it's just a simple course with huge walls, so you know there's only so much we can do. Cupa Troopa Beach is interesting because it actually has a built-in shortcut, probably one that all of you have taken if you've played the game. A debate still rages on whether or not that is considered a shortcut for time trialing. If you go to MarioKart64.com, you can check out the thousand plus people that actively time trial this game. And they take this tunnel and they call it non-shortcut. So, so that's what we do there. There's a broken finish line here. I can use a, I see I got a star in first place. Actually, I was in eighth place for just a moment. The very last polygon on the right hand side of that finish line is miscoded. And actually, it thinks it's part of the first part of the course. So you might see another mushroom come up here. Or sorry, another ghost. Don't be surprised. There it is. Might get another star, believe it or not. So real-time uh, attack runners do, do go for that shortcut. Uh, they get a, a ghost and they try to get an item there. But it's luck on whether or not they get a good one. Another thing to be concerned about when you're running this game, or even tasking this game, is... Um, that, that was an out-of-bounds goal end. Yeah, got, it, got pretty close to getting picked up by our friend Lakitu there. Um, you'll see Lakitu help us out a lot during the course of these four cups. Um, 
can actually use them to go faster. So one thing you have to worry about is also the CPU's use items. And one of the items they can use, and you'll see it at one point in this, this cup, or in a later cup, is they use lightning. And that's the one thing that can slow you down uh, when you're doing this in RTA. There's a 1% chance that the 8th place CPU will get a, uh, a lightning. So it's as low as it can be, but it can still be frustrating when it happens. Why am I going into the tunnel, you might ask. There's an intended shortcut there. In fact, uh, Shigeru Miyamoto uh, described that shortcut in an interview I read once. So very much an intended one, but we did it in a way I don't think they expected us to, kind of backwards. And then you can't get out of that fence without jumping over it. So we brought a, uh, a green shell along with us so we could jump out. So now I'm on my fourth, or third lap, sorry. And I got the opportunity to jump off Wario. <laughs> and Lakitu, thank you very much for finishing this lap for us quickly. So, so this is, it, it actually is a complete four cup task. Uh, that was the fourth race of the first cup. We'll have to manually go to the next one though. See, what we've done is, because we're starting from power on, I'm gonna turn off the console, I'm gonna go to the next flower cup, and we're gonna hope it actually sees the controller, because sometimes it doesn't. So this is a flower cup. Fingers crossed. That sounds good. Sounds good. We can hear it long before we can see it. We still can't see it. No. <laughs> there All we right. go. We're in the right race, at least. Toad's Turnpike. <clears throat> Let's see. So at the very start, there's a turbo boost you can get, and the best way to do it is to actually hold down your accelerator. Oh, what's going on here? That's perfectly normal, I think. Uh, so it's, it's pretty fun that um, when you're doing a tool assistance speed run, you can jump off other characters and just do it a, a bunch of times and just hope that you get a really nice jump. And it's just not feasible to do in a, a regular RTA in most cases. So there's a shortcut here that normally you get stuck and Lakitu helps you out to get down to this part, but we were able to jump over the, the edge of the course with a, a, a green shell, or sorry, a green shell. This is that course I was mentioning with a lot of boos. Uh, in fact, if we were trying to get this item probability in a regular run, um, it would be incredibly unlikely on this particular course. It's a four followed by 12 zeros probability of getting the exact items that we need in this exact order we need them. So you're not going to see this particular strategy anytime before the sun burns out, I don't think, on RTA. One thing to note really quickly is that the, we're playing this back on a device called an N64 bot made by Micro 500, who is really, really helpful in making these, these different devices. That is fast. You were really good at this. <laughs> yeah, Micro 500 made this bot, and it's actually, we're only using a small part of its capability. It's got four controller ports on it. Um, if you look way back at the AGDQ stream archives, you might see a Chaco Mountain Death Race that we put together um, using that the four controller ports. Yeah, AGDQ 2015. Okay, why'd you do that? Well, this course has a, a very broken finish line. So we're now at the end of the first lap. And as long as you don't touch the road, it keeps letting you advance laps. It's, it's kind of inexplicable, to be honest. Well, I guess you can touch the road just a little bit. There's a checkpoint there. Shock dodge. That's the 1% one one chance uh, that I mentioned about the CPUs using a lightning. See, so, yeah, another thing that um, Micro 500 was able to do, if, if you check the console verification video of this run, he was able to hardwire in and do the reset via the bot. So that's as, as fast as you can console verify this. Now, we don't have a reset wire here on stage. We have enough complexity getting this to work as it is. So why are we going backwards here? Uh, this is a fun little shortcut, um, little lap skip. Um, called the Weather Tenko, actually. <laughs> um, it, 
If you want to see that, frankly, done even faster, you can check out Beck Abney's three-lap world record on time trials, and he did that three times in a row. Um, you get three mushrooms at the start of time trials, so he's able to do it right away. Extremely impressive. It took him like 20,000 tries, I think. Oh, my God. Yeah. He started counting after he'd done it for a, a while, and, and we know it was more than 20,000. Very impressive. Probably one of the, actually one of the most impressive, I think, video game accomplishments I'm aware of, honestly. So this wall, thankfully, is not so high that you can't jump over it. Multiple the, times. Multiple times. The red shells don't, they do not home in on you, believe it or not. Um, they're actually hard, hard to hit yourself with. They're, so you throw the red shell, it might look like it's coming back to hit me, but it's going back to the middle of the course and you have to get in its way. So RTA runners, they do use um, the first half to skip there, but the second half is very difficult to do. One other note here is that the timing on the actual physical console differs slightly from the emulator. That's it, by the way, that's that cup. So we're gonna go to the next one. We're halfway there, folks. Yep. Four cups. We'll do the star cup next. It, it, the video came on faster that time. Yeah. Maybe I was faster. I don't know. Uh, there's some interesting subtleties. If When you play this on an emulator, you actually get a shorter time because light frames are not computed correctly in most emulators. Yeah. You, you know what's funny, though, is it turns out that's true. It turns out that if you include the, the loading times, though, on the emulator, which you, know, you end up doing, the loading is... That was over. Quickly. Yeah, that, that was fast. Yeah. Actually... <laughs> That's a very well-known shortcut, the first one at least. The second one you may have known about, but to do it that, that quickly is definitely unusual. Uh, your friends might be mad at you if you try that one while you're playing tour player. But the um, BizHawk emulator, Moopin, uh, Moopin Plus, actually emulates load times wrong, and they take twice as long on the emulator as on the real console. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to make use of something that normally you don't get to see, the island. The island turns out to be useful and drivable, which was somewhat surprising. I actually jumped out there, frankly, just to jump out there. And it turns out that you can jump off the other side and get a lap skip, a half lap skip to work. And I got a fourth place item, or a first place item glitch there as well, just like I did on um, Koopa Troopa Beach. And now I'm actually killing time because I have to wait for these computers to come. It's the only time I can think of where I just had to kill time. So if you jump from far enough back, the laps count. <laughs> thanks, Bowser. Thanks, DK. Yeah. That's it. I, I really like this level. That's a, it's a really fun level to, to see that one. Especially, you get to use the, the island, and then you get to use the CPUs. And, it's surprising how much variability there, or variation, I guess, that each lap gets to have throughout the game. This, this task in total took me about seven years to make. Uh, a lot of that was experimentation, planning, and whatnot. Ultimately, the final movie took about 200,000 200, retries, which we call re-records. You can jump right up to that. Now this. Jumping left here, you can try that against your friends. That's not too hard to do. Everything else I'd probably hold off on giving a try. We're gonna kill just a little bit of time here. Oh, oh sorry, no, we're gonna actually come up here and do a, a blue shell skip. Forgot, we, we only used the CPU jump once on this. Bowser there, we're gonna catch up to Bowser because we have to jump off of him. Thankfully, Luigi gave us a chance to jump all the way over. Not normally possible. Here's where we're going to kill just a smidge of time. Because if you jump out far enough around the finish line, you get placed on the end of your last lap in front of the finish line. So That, that was actually discovered by, um, we call it gun style, I guess, <laughs> those in the know. Um, one of the players on Mario Kart 64.com found that on the other side in uh, GP mode. So Bowser's Castle, 
another chance to see a, a normal race, actually, for, for the first lap at least. Yeah, one you'll, lap. You'll be surprised exactly how good these CPU players are when we slow down and, and race with them. We slowed down so we could get a first place item, or sec second place item. And try as I might, I cannot lose these guys. They actually just cheat like crazy on how fast they're able to move. They, they don't lose speed around corners. They, they don't have to mini turbo to get a boost. Look at how close Bowser is. I threw some banana peels around that corner to manipulate my, my randomness here. I need Bowser close, but not too close for this little trick here. If, if you jump around that, around the finish line just barely from the bridge, you can get the laps triggered. The game, it's funny, it has certain checks, but they're not very good. No, they're, they're terrible. <laughs> so if you were to jump around that finish line from right next to the finish line, um, it wouldn't work. All right, that's the end of yep. the third cup, and we're going to go to the special cup. Batting a thousand so far, no, no desyncs. Uh, knock on wood. Here. <laughs> knock on wood. And please don't desync the way, because I knocked on the wood. Get yeah, be not. <laughs> okay, so special cup is the last cup. It's actually called the IQ Cup if you play it on the IQ, the Chinese N64. No different at all, but it's called the IQ Cup. Huh. Although that version has no lag at all, so if we console verified on that, it would be a little bit faster. Okay. Next, next time. Here. This, this is a very broken level. <laughs> uh, I've actually done this shortcut. The first time I ever did it was on, on accident. I spun out and fell to the left side there, and I triggered a lap skip. But yeah, that's about as... That's much faster than when I first did that on accident. I imagine some of these easier skips, people have come across them in normal play. Some of the other ones, maybe not, though. Okay, Yoshi Valley. This has a, a well-known skip, uh, actually, on the left-hand side here. But it's very, very hard to do more than once. So jumping over the fence right there and hitting the right spot, Lakitu's going to help us out and put us back. Not behind the finish line, oddly, but it still counts. The way the game ca calculates lap times, that's close enough to the finish line to count. Um, and then doing it this last time here, difficult to do. Um, the further you get placed ahead each time, the harder it is to make it over the fence without a mushroom. I like those lap times, though. 7-3, seven, 7-3, three, seven, three, seven, three, even though there's a 2-7 in there. You know, it adds up strangely. I kind of like that. I don't know how you managed to pull that off. I don't know. Do you think there are any leftover improvements if you were to go back and do you another know, seven years of work? That's a good question. I, there's, there's a couple. There's nothing major, but um, ra uh, Royal Raceway, there's a definite improvement because you, you can get on the stands on the right-hand side and do that lap skip earlier that I used Bowser for. We're going to wait for a common, common theme here to wait to get items. But this time, oddly, I wanted... You haven't seen the gold shroom the entire race, and I'm going to use it this time and the next race. Just because, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, so Royal Raceway is improvable. Oh, by the way, that bat house, I spent way too long, probably an entire day, trying to get a different path through that to be faster, and it simply wasn't going left in the bat house. It was like this goal of mine, and it was slower. This might look a little like Bowser Castle. You have to come all the way over here, stay outside, and then pass again. So how many of the strategies that you found when making this tool assisted speedrun have been incorporated by real-time runners? Good question. The, the big one that got incorporated was Royal Race, or sorry, Rainbow Road, uh, the green shell skip that we're, we're going to see here. Um, the first lap part, though, they, they still... You're, you're not going to see that happen. I'll explain why when we get to it. But um, yeah, Mario Raceway, some of these other things, the red shell skips, and they've come up th with their own as well. Beck Abney's come up with one on Yoshi Valley that only works on certain versions. Luigi Raceway as well. Strategy, whoa, okay, so what did I do there? Um, that is a complicated thing that happened. I 
used a mushroom at the same time that I hit myself with a blue shell. And if you get lucky and it's the same frame, you cancel the blue shell spin or tumble and you just get thrown up in the air. And then I went back and got the green shells, which are, um, green shells are actually what I need to do this, this skip. It throws you over and lets you fall forward. But you can't get them on the first lap if you're in eighth because I dropped back and I'm in eighth. So I had to use that blue shell skip early. So a normal RTA runner, they're going to do a normal lap and then do the green shells. And coming up on the last straightaway here, no d -sinks. We made it. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to say, Nintendo? I'm bored and tired. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, the honesty of kids. How about you, Defenna Sam? Um, there was a lot I wanted to say in the moment, but I'm not sure what to say now. <laughs> there was a lot of shell stuff in general. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Well, I'll mute that up. So, I am Dwango AC. This is Defenna Sam. This is Rintendo. Weatherton made this tool-assisted speedrun. Micro 500 made the N64 bot that we were able to do this with. If you are here at MAGFest tomorrow, we're doing Mega Man 3, technically Rockman 3. I don't anticipate as long of a delay before we start, so if you happen to be available tomorrow, come on by and we'll see how things turn yep. out. We will also be doing more TaskBot stuff at Games Done Quick. If you want more information about TaskBot, feel free to swing by our Discord at discord.taskbot.net. And with that, I conclude this portion of the marathon. Thank you so much. All right, let's give another shout out for TaskBot. Another one for Duango AC and Weatherington.